everybody. Um, as promised, today I want to discuss boundaries. And we hear this word thr uh, thrown around left and right. All sorts of mental health professionals, um, especially on YouTube, talk about the importance of interpersonal boundaries. But I think very few people can really um, define them, define what it means to have interpersonal boundaries. Um, one really good discussion on interpersonal boundaries um, is on the channel uh, Self Love You. Uh, and I can't think of her name off the bat. Um, I think her name is Jenna, but I'm not sure. Um, she talks about um, a glass of wine when she's um, explaining what interpersonal boundaries are. And she gives the example of um, a person that's at a cocktail party that wants a glass of wine. And uh, a sociopathic narcissist uh, that may be testing that person tells them uh, to have some sort of other beverage, like a beer or a margarita. Again, I'm paraphrasing, um, but this example is perfect because um, if you want a glass of wine and a third party is telling you, no, don't have this glass of wine, have a margarita or a Prosecco or a screwdriver or um, vodka with cranberry. That is a sign, that is a telltale sign, that you may be dealing with a sociopathic narcissist. And it seems very trivial to a person that has not dealt with narcissism. Um, how do you know that this person just didn't really, really, really think that the Prosecco in this place is top-notch and that... They really, 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 really wanted you to try this Prosecco because it's just a, a divine Prosecco from uh, the hills of uh, Naples. And the grapes are picked from the, from the best trees um, with the ripest uh, with uh, seasonality. And they would absolutely die because they're so close to you. Um, <laughs> if you didn't have this great, great, great Prosecco. That's a once-in-a-lifetime Prosecco. And I'm using humor here in order to, to bring about a point. If somebody is trying to get you to change a habit that you like, there's something wrong with that person. Boundaries are the things that make us ourselves, our preferences. Um, boundaries are what we would prefer to do. And many times sociopathic narcissists will cross your boundaries by trying to make you believe that you have to do something other than what you want to do. So for example, if you like interior design, or if you like graphic design, and you're going to college for graphic design, a sociopathic guidance counselor may convince you to change your major. A sociopathic um, boss may convince you to not go to law school, even though you want to go to law school. A sociopathic co-worker will convince you to eat at a certain restaurant as opposed to the restaurant that you want to eat at or that you want to order from. A sociopathic friend, when they're close enough to you, may convince you that a certain dress that looks really good on you does not look good on you. 
And all of this will be made under the guise of making you feel as though these people have your back. That they're trying to create intimacy by introducing things into the relationship that you don't like. Um, and boundaries are basically a set of principles, a set of preferences that you need to defend at all times when you're getting to know a person especially. If you know a person for seven years and they really want you to do something that you don't usually do and they truly have your best interests in mind, then maybe you should listen to them. And even then, people that are empathetic will not insist that you change your behavior. They won't insist that. And if they, they will not use force. And that's the difference between a narcissist and a regular person. So if let's say you have a, you have a problem with your weight. You like to eat a lot. Right? A concerned friend will maybe mention it to you and say, listen, I, I want you to try this program. It's really worked for me. And then after a certain amount of times, they will drop the subject and say, you know what, I warned you that, that this may be out of hand for you. Um... A normal friend who's concerned maybe that you drink too much will try to convince you to join AA. Will probably offer help in some form and may give you an ultimatum that if you do not stop drinking, you will lose the friendship. What a narcissist will do is they will encourage your substance abuse to, to force you into a situation where your boundaries are compromised. When you're on substances, when you're, on, when you're addicted to something, you're not able to defend your boundaries because you have a dependency, a very hard physiological dependency on something else other than yourself, your own mind, and that's what they like. So, if you feel that something benefits you, it could be anything. It could be a passion for stocks. It could be a passion for Bitcoin. It could be a passion for drawing. It could be a passion for writing. People that... L respect your boundaries that have may have nothing to nothing no interests in drawing or bitcoin or whatever you're interested in stocks but they will listen to you they will encourage you to pursue your passions they will maybe buy you drawing utensils on your birthday because they want you to follow your dreams I once had a person, uh, a friend, that was interested in kickboxing. And the reason why he was interested in kickboxing was because he wanted to be more masculine. He felt that uh, he wanted to defend himself. So I joined the kickboxing lessons with him. And uh, that bonded us. This is just one example. Like... But even then, um, because even then, the situation is like this. Normal people are going to respect your freedom of choice. And if you live in a cosmopolitan city, like I do in New York, there are so many different things that you can do here that it's hard to find people with identical interests to you but yet people um, that will want to be your friend will support your divergent interests. 
So a surgeon can be friends with a lawyer and will listen to stories about um, the law, even though that's not a direct interest in them. The narcissist will try to have their interests completely align with yours, and that's boundary crossing, because that erases your self-identity. Anybody that asks you to give up your self-identity, even in a small way, even in a, in a small way, you have to watch out for it. That is a red flag. That is a red flag. Narcissists will often say things to their spouses like, this is going to be our breakfast place from now on, or this is going to be our restaurant from now on. Or um, they're going to say things like, why are you doing this? You know, why are you doing that? Your, your response to these kind of things must be always, because I can, <laughs> because I like it, because I want to. You don't know, oh, anybody, an explanation, a reason for why you're doing something. And many times... This proclivity to explain yourself comes from situations where you've been interrogated by a narcissistic spouse or friend or mother or whoever. The interrogation is like, why are you doing this? Where are you going? Why this, not that? <laughs> they do this in order to normalize boundary crossing. And normal people do not understand that. They have no use for that. Normal people will celebrate the things that you're doing. Because normal people are creators. And somebody can have absolutely nothing in common with you. They could have two children, a house, and a wife. And you could be single. But you could have one area of commonality that makes you interesting to them. And they can live with that. And you can, you don't have to completely change your personality and have children and a wife and a house <laughs> in order to remain their friend. In order to remain, um, to feel safe with them. But narcissists will ask you to change yourself entirely, and they will press and insist that you change yourself, you change your life around, you change your preferences. And that's why, in order to be healthy, you have to have preferences. Make a list of the boundaries that you won't have crossed. Let's say you want to lose weight, and let's say you're, you insist on not eating processed foods. That could be a boundary that you enforce when new people come into your life. Let's say you want to insist on having a hobby, and that could be a boundary that you enforce when new people come into your life, and you're going to insist that you maintain that hobby and that they cannot intrude on it. They cannot um, override your desire to pursue that hobby. And if they say anything disparaging about that hobby or discouraging, they have to get out of your life. It's very important to have an identity because people that understand who they are and can defend their boundaries are very unattractive for malignant narcissists. People that have a clear idea of their where they stand politically culturally um, in terms of fashion in terms of anything and defend that space defend these fences that they've built around themselves to prevent intruders from coming in they're very unattractive to narcissists and I hope that this helps take care this is...